Um, How would you like to run the, the session? Less than 20 minutes, hopefully. Uh, if if the, the the interaction get interesting, <laughs> we might travel more than that. <laughs> who really knows? But briefly, can you tell me about yourself, who you are, what you did, and what you are doing now? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm Janae Duplessis. I am South African. I. Uh, my background is in investment banking. I spent about 18 years of my life as an investment banker. Started out at New York um, at Gold Program. The South African Investment Bank, Standard Bank, Net Bank, Rand Merchant Bank, mainly in mergers and acquisitions, um, mining and resources, and also agriculture, actually. So we have something in common. Um, I spent some time um, working, uh, which is, as you know, the large DFI on the continent. I was the chief investment officer for private sector investments. How business outside of Africa Africa, in particular infrastructure and private enterprises work on the rest of the continent. I lived in Nigerian for four years. So I regard West Africa as my sort of second home in Africa. Um, in 2000, I, I was a little despondent and I had an existential crisis that investment banking is not going to save this continent. We just made and development wasn't getting any funding. So in 2009, I created an impact fund called a broad can, 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 can you take that again? I think there is some kind of hitches here. Uh, you said an investment, you realized that an investment banking was not going to help Africa. Yes, so in, I had, I have to preface that to say I had my own personal existential crisis because I was working in investment banking for so long. Or certainly not as fast as investment banks were making money for shareholders, but that was not trickling down to the people that really needed development. And so I, I decided to create an impact fund called Abrazo Capital, and it was to invest in women in rural areas on the African continent. Um, and by that, doing rural development and linking those businesses to urban and peri-urban businesses as supply chains through supply chains. Um, and we did 19 investments in 14 different African countries. And it was um, quite a successful fund for an impact fund. We had an exit IRR of 19%, 1%. Um, I then uh, returned back to South Africa after living in West Africa for eight years. Um, and I create, started a vent, corporate venture capital fund. Um, for one of the South African banks called Nedbank. Um, it was a later stage tech VC fund, so Series A, Series B. Um, I imagine you know how the, all the different funding stages work in, in tech VC. So later stages, uh, which was great, and that's where most of the capital was, but there was still an issue in that you need enough funding and support at the earlier stages to get where all the capital is. Um, and that was the sort of the birth of my most recent venture called Launch Africa Ventures, which is a pan-African early stage seed fund investing in seed stage businesses. And we, we try to get companies to raise a successful series A within 12 to 18 months of us investing. Mm -hmm. And that's we regard ourselves as the bridge to the bridge to their Series A. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and you talked about the seed money. What exactly do you mean? I'll start from. Imagine you have an idea, 
Um, and you probably in Africa, you probably using your own resources, your own capital, that idea into what we call a minimal viable product, right? And that's when you can test it. Is there a market for it? Can I get customers and will uh, customers are willing to pay for my product? Um, after that, usually there are very strong angel networks. So an angel investor, somebody that believes in you as an entrepreneur, but also that you are able to scale this product or this technology um, and gain enough traction for it to grow. Those are angel networks. And usually angel networks are, and they are very well established, but they're very hyper local. So you'll find Lagos angels, Jersey angels, so very city specific or country specific but there's no pan-African angel network. At, at that stage, companies usually go through an accelerator. Okay. An accelerator are organized programs that help you to incorporate your business, put the right operational efficiencies in place, and also try to get you your first customers. There are about 76 uh, accelerators in Africa. It's quite an established market. And accelerators have actually been driving the startup venture capital space for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, and especially since 2017, you saw accelerators playing the most pivotal stage at the, uh, the survival of startups. Mm -hmm. But starting any business, as you would know, is challenging, right? Because you have to build a team, product, get investors, that's a lot. And so if you look at the life stage of a, a startup, the first couple of years is often called the valley of death. Terrible term, but the valley, the valley of death. So if you look at a graph, it first dips before there's ex ex exponential scale. Right. And that's where probably most startups fail. And what we want to do, like accelerators, is to ensure that companies successfully get through the valley of death and in africa most of the capital exists for later stage startups so mm -hmm. if we just look at the 2021 numbers about 5 billion was invested in 860 startups last year but if you look at that 5 billion around 60 percent of that went for later stage so once you through the value of debt we call your series a you've got client markets already and you've got sustainable revenue in your business you're probably generating around a hundred thousand us dollars every month in your business that's when you're out of the value of debt but you need to get through the value of death and that's where angel investor networks accelerators and seed stage funds do very well to accelerate that through the value of death for startups. And so what we thought was that there is not enough money at the seed stage. Once companies come out of the accelerator, there wasn't enough capital for them to sustain themselves to get to a successful series A. So before Launch Africa, what you often saw was that, that Companies came out accelerate and they rushed to do a series A, but they didn't have the right fundamentals in the business. Revenue wasn't there, team wasn't fully built, and they didn't have enough network. And started off with this fund. We started the fund at the start. Of, what a way to start a new business, of course, uh, because we saw the need. Um, and our goal is to provide not only financial support, but we also provide essential non-financial support for our founders. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is for every dollar that we invest, we also ensure that companies get a dollar of non-financial support. And that means access to talent outside of funding, finding the right people to work for your organization is probably the biggest other challenge for access to talent, access to experts. So you as an individual, you probably need 
to have a broad array of advisors, experts advising you to grow your business. And we provide that to our founders. Mm. Then access to other investors um, mm. as you are raising and you're growing this business, you need more capital for its growth. Mm. And we introduce you to both African and global investors Hmm. so we definitely not only a financial backer we work very closely with our portfolio companies to help them scale their business so this so we've been doing this for yeah Yeah. we've been doing this since july of 2020 now um and we've invested in 116 companies um across the continent Okay. Um, and uh, currently we have tw- 116 companies from 20 different African countries. So we definitely see ourselves as a frontier fund, not only investing in Nigeria, Kenya, Egypt, and South Africa, the big four major tech hubs, but we've also invested in Togo, Benin. We're very optimistic about West Africa, particularly Francophone Africa. We've invested in uh, about 12 investments in Senegal, five in, five in Ghana, mm. we based, um, the DRC, um, and then obviously East Africa as well, um, Uganda, um, um, Kenya, uh, and then Southern Africa, uh, South Africa, Botswana, um, and Zambia. So I said, sometimes we see companies where the technology or the business model is very disruptive, but they might not be investment ready yet. And then we have a team that work with the entrepreneur to make them investment ready. Hmm. And it usually takes two to three months, and then we will make an investment. Hmm. So we consider, to give you an idea In 2021, we looked at 1,500 companies, and to date, we've invested in 116 of them. Um, Not that the rest aren't great companies, they were just not investment ready for us. Hmm. So, your final, before I come to your final ways, what do you expect from companies, uh, startup companies? across the country, uh, the continent, I mean, and what are some of the, uh, your, your, your targets in the next five years? Mm. Yeah, so the great thing about African startups that I'm really excited about is that they solve real world problems, right? Mm. A grandmother is selling fruit at the market. She needs a way to pay for it. She needs that that fruit needs to come from a farm, you know, like, and so what African entrepreneurs are doing is solving real daily problems or challenges faced by other Africans. Um, And I get very excited by that. You know, in Africa, we still have 600 million Africans that are unbanked. All of those people need to get into formal financial services. They need to start saving. They need to have sort of economic empowerment. So there's still a lot of opportunities that we we have. What I what I like is that more and more we're seeing innovative ideas around what what corporates are struggling with. So corporates, obviously, major organization, slow to change, innovation is not so fast. There are great entrepreneurs, startup entrepreneurs solving those corporate issues as well. And what's been exciting is during COVID, we saw that a majority of us Africans have gone online. We are now buying through platforms. But what's been great is you saw an increase in edtech, so education technology mm. across the board. You saw uh, an increase in health tech. So yes. now people have access to doctors through their mobile phone, right? They have access to experts. They have now got resources in order to ensure that they have got the medical advice that they need. We, for example, and this is a nice Ghanaian example, invested in a company called Flurry. And Flurry helps immigrants to save my medical insurances. 
just to give a financial peace of mind for their immigrants that are sending money back home for private. That is, and this is all through a mobile platform. Mm. That is incredible innovation, which was started because of the COVID get money across to loved ones. Mm. Um, so before, yeah, so, okay, okay, continue, please. So, so African in, uh, entrepreneurs or people with ideas try to solve real world problems that you see in your neighborhood, that you see in your company, that's going to scale very fast across the African continent. Okay, so my final question has to do with the Ghanaian companies that you've supported. What exactly have you done for them? Can you mention a few of them? You said six of them. Uh, what have you done for them? And so yeah, that- yes, I mean, so yeah, so we've invested in five. Um, I'll quickly go through them and I'll also talk about what their needs are. So um, Complete Pharma is a Ghanaian company, most amazing agricultural company that uses data and technologies to connect all the stakeholders in the agri-chain value chain. And it ensures quality of control, proper standards, in food production systems. So if you look at traceability, now through computed pharma, you can understand where your cucumber was planted um, and you can understand it through the value chain right into the retail store. Um, an amazing opportunity, especially um, as we, the world is going through food security at the moment, and with food security, traceability, and uh, affordability across the value chain becomes so important. And this is the model that Complete Pharma is bringing to the market. Um, very exciting agri-tech with large uh, opportunities, both in Africa um, and across the continent, um, about, and, across, and globally, in fact, as well, because food security is an issue across the globe. Yeah. Number two is a company called the Africa Foresight Group. And it's actually the largest market of freelancers in Africa. So they, they offer freelance services to build companies uh, using their freelancers that work on the platform. So large companies, investment funds, development partners hire these freelancers to do work. So it's almost uh, the, the global equivalent would be the very successful Upwork um, and, free, and Africa Foresight Group, founded by a female Ghanaian uh, founder, is doing exactly the same, making freelance work um, readily available to Africans across the world. The next company that we invested in is Flurry. I love Flurry because Flurry is a company that provides cross-border medical insurance. It's a marketplace that brings peace of mind and financial security to immigrants that are working abroad to provide the people in country with uh, insurance policies um, for their loved ones in their home countries. Mm. And they do it through a very reliable and secure, affordable way through a marketplace where they have their customers and their uh, medical providers providing services to um, uh, families back home. Um, solving a real need, as we know, insurance market is underdeveloped in Africa, and especially the medical insurance. Um, and this is really not only a company, but they're bringing an entire ecosystem, uh, they're building an entire ecosystem alongside with them. Mm. The next company is Spark. Um, Spark is a financial app helping Canadians move money in a faster, better, and simpler way. Um, and it is uh, it helps with peer-to-peer -peer transaction. <laughs> and you can view your, your, your transactions online um, at any time. And it especially works well for clubs, 
savings clubs or any sort of um, mini community that is established. And then our, our final one is very similar. It's called Waya Money. Mm. And Waya Money, Waya money does yeah. a cross border and cross network remittances and payment solutions across the African continent. It's like a digital banking platform. Then um, we help founders to go through the AI's key performance indicators. We provide an indicator of at your stage of your business, what be, should be your targets that you should be working towards. Um, and I would say, finally, we try our best to give exposure, marketing, and branding to our portfolio companies. We have access to some of the top events or forums and conferences that we always showcase our, our founders. I, just today, I introduced 14 of our founders to a big conference that is happening later um, in the year, and they'll all be um, uh, presenting their business. And then finally, I would say we also help access to professional firms um, such as lawyers, tax, audits, IP, um, and any other auxiliary business. Mm. And we try to negotiate special terms for our startup founders. So each of them had three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, as as a kind of a support. Uh, as an investment, yes. So we in, this is an investment, and then. Our non-financial support is all the things I've just mentioned. So this kind of investment, is it that they are going to pay some money back to your company? Or how is it like? So I, I should have said it's an equity investment. So we take a, a shareholding in our companies. Because we come in at the seed stage, and we provide a small amount of capital, but a large amount of non-financial support, we typically only have about five to 10% of the equity in the business. Mm. Um, and that's why we are a high volume fund, whereas other funds would probably only invest in 10 to 20 companies, but they have substantial equity. Our strategy is to have a small amount of equity Equity, five to 10% in many companies mm -hmm. because we want to have enough time to add non-financial support as well. Your final ways. Say again? Your final ways. Oh, yeah. Um, I would just like to encourage anybody listening. If you've got an idea, building any business takes patience, takes a lot of resilience and tenacity. But if, if there's any entrepreneur with patience, tenacity, and resilience, it's an African entrepreneur. So continue building your businesses. And when you 